Google have announced their new quantum computer called Willow named after this tree. Now you might be thinking, why should I care? If I wanted to buy one of these, it would cost me hundreds of millions of dollars. But you should care because Willow has a large number of qubits with high connectivity and can run diverse applications. We measure low mean error rates across all operations with multiple native two qubit gates. Whoa, 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 hold on Einstein. What are you on about? This makes about as much sense to me as Elon Musk's child's first name. They also decided to put AI at the end of it, just in case it wasn't already literally everywhere that you look. I swear, if I hear the two letters AI one more time, I'm going to jump out of a window. Anyway, I'm not here to waste your time like Mark Rober or Veritasium, so let's get into what this means for the average person. You see, classical computers store bits as either a zero or a one. But in a quantum computer, bits are called qubits, and they can store a value of zero or one when measured but they can also represent a value called a superposition of 0 and 1 at the same time. So one qubit can actually represent the state of two classical bits simultaneously. And if you have two qubits, they can represent all four possible combinations of two classical bits simultaneously. So in general, if you have n qubits, they can represent a superposition of two to the n classical bits. For small numbers, this doesn't make much of a difference. But for big numbers like 105, this makes a massive difference. Just 105 qubits can represent approximately 4.06 times 10 to the 31 bits, or around 5.1 sextillion <laughs> sex terabytes. For reference, the current storage capacity of all the devices in the world combined is around 34 million times less than that. Now this doesn't mean that we can store 5.1 sextillion terabytes in this single chip because as soon as the qubits are measured, they revert back to a zero or a one. But this does mean that we can perform operations on vast amounts of data using just 105 qubits because these qubits exist in a state of superposition. When they tested Willow against one of the fastest supercomputers in the world, in the random circuit sampling benchmark, it performed a computation in under five minutes that would take one of the fastest computers today 10 septillion years to complete. With that kind of computing power, Google could start to analyze DNA and simulate complex molecular structures with unprecedented speeds. They would also have the power to crack modern day encryption algorithms used to secure private messages sent over apps like WhatsApp or Signal. But Google would never do something like that, right? Surely not.